We're already, he's, uh, his name is an anagram of Irish, which yes. is good. It's great for us, yeah. right? Good start. And he's the youngest prime minister they've had at only four. He's born in 1980. Younger than Tony Blair when he started, younger than David Cameron when he started. Also the richest prime minister they've ever had. Uh, like, what is it, 730? 730 million pounds. Wow. pounds. He married well. He had money himself, but he married basically the Bill Gates of India. He married his daughter. So her dad invented this telecommunications company in India and she's incredibly wealthy. So he wasn't doing too bad, but he married up. He definitely married up. So he does yeah. not need this job. No, he doesn't need this job. He's also the first Goldman Sachs prime minister. He worked in Goldman Sachs for a long time as well. He went to Oxford. He went to the Winchester School, which is an incredibly expensive private school. Um, he is the son of a GP and a pharmacist. And he once very casually uh, mentioned in an interview that he had absolutely no working class friends. Okay. <laughs> yes. So it's a when great start. When, it, when he was a student. When he was a student. We've all done silly things, things and said silly things when we were 20. Um, or 22, I think he was. So he's got a lot going for a Clever yes. guy, lots of money. So really, for in a position that he is, he's maybe doing this for the real need to want to change things. Uh, we'll bring in Bob on this, because, Bob, it's been a pretty fractious time for UK politics. So is Richie the man who can unite the government and maybe try to get things going forward again over in the UK? Well, thanks very much for inviting me to, to come and talk to you. Uh, yes, I think he can. Uh, and why is that? Uh, because he is a man, I think, of real abilities. Um, and he's actually genuinely devoted to public service. His, his grandparents came over to the UK from India with absolutely nothing. Uh, and uh, his parents then uh, worked there hard to get him to, to a good school with the help of a scholarship, it's worth saying. So he didn't start with anything. So he's made his own way. And I think he genuinely believes in paying back. Uh, and he's also a very pragmatic guy. And I worked with him quite a bit around the financial services side when he was chancellor. And he was somebody who uh, had his strong views and principles, but was also very pragmatic and realistic about how you got there and actually delivering things. So I think he's about delivery. And he's certainly got the strongest credentials, uh, I think, of any of the potential candidates. I think it was really striking, actually, in the last couple of days, uh, the momentum of my parliamentary colleagues towards him and the, the feeling uh, in Westminster uh, last night really was the most positive that we've had for a very long time, because it has been a grim time. Uh, but there was a real sense that uh, if we work at this, we can turn a corner. Uh, and Bob, I suppose, looking from the outside in, as the world has been, it has felt like the UK has been Italy. You know, this is your third prime minister this year. Um, we don't think of the UK as being so unstable, uh, but it certainly has been that. And the Conservative Party itself is very fractious. We're talking about five factions within the Conservative Party. For the British people, he is an unelected, as Liz Truss was, prime minister. Do you think that there will be pressure growing because we've got a, a period of austerity probably coming for the people of the UK, that, that there is a chance that they will push, that they will rally behind Rishi Sunak or that people will demand a general election in the near future? Well, I think as far as the party is concerned, Rishi laid it on the line uh, pretty strongly yesterday that, you know, if, if we don't unite... Uh, then we're in an ex existential problem. It's unite or die, basically. Uh, and it's, it's, it's profoundly disappointing for me. I've been a, a Tory party member for over 50 years. I've been an MP for, uh, and a councillor before that for many years. And uh, uh, in the last few years, uh, we have got ourselves into a degree of internal disputes that we never used to have before. So we need to turn that round. But I genuinely believe he can. I think in relation to the election point, uh, well, you know, we don't have a US presidential system. We've got a, a parliamentary system. The Conservative Party uh, won a majority, a very big majority in 2019. And our uh, constitution is that whoever's got the command of the majority party can get a majority of seats in parliament can be prime minister. And in fairness, um, Labour, after all, replaced Tony Blair with Gordon Brown, uh, and he then carried on uh, for the, the bulk of the rest of the Parliament. So there's plenty of constitutional precedents for that happening without a general election. What we've got to do is actually carry on with the job in hand, which is dealing with the immediate uh, economic pressures that we face, you know, the, the cost of living crisis, getting inflation under control, actually supporting the most vulnerable people in society through what's going to be a, a very difficult uh, winter going forward. Yeah, I mean, it is going to be a very difficult winter, Aoife, because, like, you see what's happened in the... Listen, we know the cost of living crisis. We know how people are really yeah. struggling out there. We know what happened with Boris that made him have to step down from a position. 
then followed by Liz Truss, then Richie Sunak, mm -hmm. who's come in, who's going to have to make really difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's going to hit people in the pockets. Yeah, and I think what he would say is that the plan they're now implementing is actually Rishi Sunak's plan when he was Chancellor that Liz Truss tried to roll back. Which was obviously didn't work because he didn't... He, he Like, we're seeing the momentum, as Bob just talked about there, going towards Richie. Mm -hmm. Like, Liz had that momentum when Richie came second to her. Yeah, and this is the thing. So I think he's got a massive job at hand, but I think what the pressure will be on now, like Bob said, is that... The Tories know that this is their last chance. They will not get this chance again. I don't think the British public would stand for it again. There is a huge crisis coming down the line. The only thing I would say that he has going for him, and he doesn't come with the kind of baggage that Boris Johnson has. He doesn't come with the kind of, like, instant memification that Liz Truss had. You know, she she got off to a terrible start from the outset. Boris is Boris. Rishi has, be, has been seen from everyone that I've heard speak about him who knew him or as a, a T, uh, MP said, he's very pragmatic, mm -hmm. he's a very nice man and he is solutions driven. I cannot see... I might love to regret this. I cannot see any big scandal coming down the road like we could have seen with Boris Johnson. And he he was fined, you know, for breaking the rules during COVID. And I was listening to an interview yesterday where he said he he very much considered resigning at the time. You know, that's the kind of person he was. He was very uh, upset about it at the time. So he is a very different person um, from Boris Johnson and much less ideological than Liz Truss. Right. So I think that's what they, he has going for him. I consider resigning, but I didn't. Um, yeah. Now, he was a Brexiter, you know, he, he was, was he was leave. We have got a huge issue with the Northern Ireland mm -hmm. Protocol. There is no assembly in Stormont. This has been going on for far too long. Yeah. What, is this, is this going to be a conciliatory Rishi towards Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. the EU, because we know that the Irish government are are happy that he's going to be mm -hmm. the, like they're delighted mm -hmm. Boris is gone, yeah. delighted Liz is gone, and they're mm -hmm. like we can work with Rishi. They actually were pleasantly surprised with Liz Truss. They said that there was definitely a reset in relationships when Liz Truss came in. I think she was very keen to get a one because she had messed up so much other stuff with Rishi. He's due to speak to the Taoiseach in the next couple of days, but nothing's been organised yet. They reckon he, because he's so prag pragmatic and solutions driven, and he has already said he would prefer a negotiated outcome to the Northern Ireland Protocol. But the fact of the matter is, if it's not sorted by Friday, and it will not be sorted by Friday, there's going to be new elections in the North, and the elections will be held on the same day as the Taoiseach Michal Martin and Leo Varegger are supposed to rotate. I don't know what I'm going to do that day. Will that, election definitely, <laughs> will that election definitely what happen? Cover? What do you do? Sorry. It'll definitely happen, if that election. Not, if it's if not Stormont isn't, isn't yeah. restored by Friday, it has to we happen. have to have an election. That's the law. And In the December. Secretary of State, um, Chris Heaton Harris, has said unequivocally he will be calling the election. He will be calling yeah. it. Wow, OK. Interesting stuff. She's already, um, I love the way you're already thinking forward to that week of work going, I can't be dealing with that. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> two, pla two places at once. Uh, listen, even more from the Sunday Times, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And of course, MP, Sir Bob Neil, it's brilliant to have you with us as well to give us... Good to see you. That perspective is, yeah, really interesting. We'd love to hear from you at home, 0896 111 Do you think Rishi is the man to bring those Anglo-Irish relations together? It's pretty fractious at the minute. Rishi, Alan. Irish, same thing. Yeah, 0896 111 We would love to hear from you.